Thank you for downloading this episode of A History of Central Florida podcast. This is the podcast where we explore Central Florida's history through the artifacts found in local area museums and historical societies. This series is brought to you by Riches, the regional initiative to collect the history, experiences, and stories of Central Florida, and the Orange County Regional History Center. I am Bethany Dickens, and I will be your host for this episode titled Uniform. The item featured in today's podcast appears to be a simple military outfit. This Women's Army Corps uniform is displayed at the Halifax Museum of Daytona Beach. The basic garment actually reveals a rich story of women's participation in Central Florida's World War II effort. During World War II, women received new opportunities that drew them into the workforce. Through their work for the Army Corps, women's roles were redefined. The war helped to shape women's identity outside the home, in the workplace, and in the political sphere. Before World War II, women did work. However, job opportunities were not readily available outside of the home. Dr. Tracy Revels from Wofford College explains the slow process of women entering the workforce that culminated in World War II. You know, there's an old saying that says when men go to war, women go to work. And that had certainly been true in American history. In the Civil War, for example, in Florida, women worked very hard to keep the farms, the plantations, a lot of the businesses running. Same thing for uh, World War I. They would also keep things going. Now, during the Great Depression, women could get jobs when men couldn't because women tended to be more in the service industries, which weren't hit as hard as, say, construction and the heavy industries. So one thing that's going on in the 1930s is more and more women, whether they want to or not, are slowly entering the workforce. Then the war comes along, and suddenly so many men are gone And there are so many more jobs open for women that they may feel either because they feel very patriotic and these are war industry jobs or simply because they have to take care of their family. During World War II, some women would turn to the military for meaningful work. A WAC base was established in Central Florida at the beginning of the war. Remarkably, Mary McLeod Bethune, president of Bethune-Cookman College in Daytona, the historically black college, played a role in bringing the base to the city. Dr. Leonard Lempel from Daytona State College explains. Beginning of World War II, when we entered the war, a WAC base was established in Iowa, actually, and the uh, the head of it was uh, uh, General Ovetta Hobby. Uh, she was uh, she was named the uh, commanding officer of the uh, of the WACs. Uh, they soon realized they needed a second base. Mary McLeod Bethune then uh, found out about that. She was uh, an assistant to uh, General Hobby, and uh, she recommended uh, to her friend Eleanor Roosevelt, she had pretty good connections in Washington, D.C. Mary McLeod Bethune uh, had uh, been a close, was a close friend of Eleanor Roosevelt, and uh, and she was uh, also named by uh, the president uh, to uh, the National Youth Administration. She was made minority, uh, head of the Minority Affairs Division of the National Youth Administration. And so she had very good connections uh, in, in uh, Washington. With At the beginning of the war, um, Daytona Beach uh, really suffered because it was a tourist haven and you know with the blackouts and everything on the East Coast it basically destroyed the tourist business. So there was a lot of uh, effort to try to get other things here uh, to replace that tourist business. So uh, it was a real boon when uh, Mary McLeod Bethune was able to bring that WAC base here to Daytona. WACs were recruited throughout Central Florida, and women could enlist with only two years of high school as a requirement. Women were ineligible if they had children or a husband that served in the Army. Women's Army opportunities were therefore tempered by domestic priorities. Despite these restrictions, women in Central Florida proved enthusiastic about serving their country. Dr. Revels tells us about these women. 
I believe something like 6 million women in America took jobs for the first time during World War II. Well, one of the new jobs that was open to them by, I believe, 1942 was the the wax and being able to join these women's auxiliary branches of the armed forces. What would that have meant? Well, certainly I think for many women it would have been very exciting to actually be in the military and not just on the sidelines, not just in the Red Cross or in a volunteer organization, but actually wearing the uniform of their country and not having to, you know, pretend to be a man to do it like you would have done in the Civil War. Certainly the idea that they were going to be able to basically replace men so that a man could go to the front line and the woman could take his job in uh, the the Signal Corps, whatever it was they were working in, must have been very, very fulfilling to these women. Often, more women would show up to recruiting sessions than were expected. In St. Petersburg, Florida, the Navy was pressured to increase its quota for female recruits when women flooded to sign up. Tracy Revels explains what these women would experience once they joined the WAX. Uh, they would certainly have had basic physical conditioning. They would have learned the rules of the Army. They might have also learned a skill uh, like radio operation, typing, filing. The basic idea was you want to free up men to go and fight. So anything that's considered a desk job or like a radio job, a non-combatant type role, that's what we want to train women for. I do know that women in Daytona also did swimming because I've run across a statement of a gentleman who was watching them swim and made the comment to a reporter that, well, if this is war, I'm all for it. Other positions in the military were also filled by women. Nurses trained as civilians became important medical professionals serving in the military. As the war went on and men were needed to serve at the front lines, women also piloted cargo planes. With women taking on these roles, men could more easily serve at the front lines. Some of these women used their new economic positions to gain political opportunities. During the war, Opportunities in politics and journalism were open to women as more men left the country. These opportunities propelled several women into the public sphere. Black and white women benefited from the WAC program, as described by Dr. Lemple. You know, Mary McLeod Bethune, of course, her interest was to uh, help uh, facilitate uh, the rise of, of blacks, and, you know, to get black officers. And there were uh, she was uh, instrumental in getting hundreds of, of women, black women, uh, as a part. At, at the peak, there was about 14,000 uh, women here in Daytona. This was in the fall of 1943. Uh, after that, the base uh, switched to Georgia, uh, so they started leaving in the spring of 1944. So the peak was about uh, the fall of 1943, and there was something like 14,000 uh, women here, and uh, there were several hundred uh, black women who were training to be officers. There was some dispute there because Mary McLeod Bethune was, you know, wanted integration, wanted the uh, uh, women to be integrated, but uh, uh, during that period it was just out of the question, and so there was segregation. Uh, Bethune thought about resigning, but decided uh, to stay because she could help at least even if it was segregated, she could at least help hundreds of black women to become uh, uh, officers. Even after the war was over, women could enjoy the gains made during the World War II era. Many people assumed that once all the men returned home from combat, women would dutifully marry and settle down. This was not always the case, and particularly not in Central Florida. Following World War II, the tourism industry in Florida began to grow. Jobs became available in the service industry that still fit the bill of women's work. More than any other place in the country, Central Florida continued to employ women and keep them in the workforce. The women who would enter these positions already had the experience necessary, some from working in WPA programs or in the military's administrative offices. 
Dr. Revels explains that women also came away from the military with a new sense of pride and their place in history. And then certainly after the war, while like all the armed forces, they demobilized very quickly, being in the WACs, I'm sure, gave women a new sense of confidence that there was a lot they could do, that they could seek employment, that they uh, could be maybe more than their mothers or grandmothers had ever imagined that they could be. One of my high school teachers was a former WAC. And I know that what I observed in her was she had a a great sense of patriotism and also a really great connection to history from having been in that role. As economic opportunities continued to expand for women in the 20th century, women would continue to go into the workforce more and more. The uniform at the Halifax Museum communicates this shift in the role of women in the workplace that echoes to us in the present day. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of A History of Central Florida podcast. For more information about the WAC uniforms featured in this episode, visit the Halifax Historical Museum at 252 South Beach Street, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32114. Make sure to join us for our next episode titled Citrus Industry.